Thank you for having us. It's a big pleasure to be here. Uh, I have to say that this seminar is one of the beautiful uh, aspects of the quarantine. Uh, so uh, it's a perfect time to be together uh, in a, this freak war. And the second uh, thing that I have to say that uh, this talk especially is a consequence of the Dave talk in the supergroup logic seminar. So it's a really, really good uh, aspect of uh, the discussion in, in our seminar. And, and I have to say thank you especially for Shai, Marcus and Damian for organizing that. It's a, a strong task, so uh, thank you. Well, uh, as Damian say, our topic is anti-exceptionalism and meta-inferential logic. And the idea is to introduce uh, the Buenos Aires plan. Uh, what is exactly the Buenos Aires plan for us? Uh, as you know, uh, people in Buenos Aires uh, are working, especially in to offer a new criterion of identity of logic. Every meta-inferential level should be taken into account, not only what is more traditional, uh, the inference of logic validities, uh, but also what meta-inferences it make valid. Uh, the, maybe the idea is not only uh, the different levels of the meta-inferential logic, uh, even we argue that uh, there are different aspects as um, anti-validities, contingencies in another world, uh, jointly satisfactibility, Brian Porter recently manuscript say. Uh, for example, this is aspect should also be taken in account. The second aspect of our project is to develop meta-inferential logic, as you know, uh, as they often do better than inferential op options. Uh, the background of the project is meta-inferential of level N are taken to be inferences between set of premise meta-inferences of the level N minus 1 and conclusions meta-inference of the level minus, minus 1 also. A meta-inference is encoded mat by meta-sequence, sequence of sequence. For example, a really clear case is the rule of cut. Usual talk for recursive definition of validity of meta-inference are mixes, consequence, local validity, and this kind of uh, stuff. Uh, we offer an specifically meta-inferential hierarchy, in particular of in the talk of Dave one time ago, uh, say the ST hierarchy. The Buenos Aires plan logic is to allow a deeper understanding of non-transitive and non-reflexive logic. In the pure level, using uh, a terminology of Graham, uh, the idea is to provide a framework to discuss in details of uh, links between different notion of validity and their possible counterpart in proof theory. Uh, the Buenos Aires plan offers the possibility to include different levels of paraconsistency and paracompleteness, not only at the level of the inferences. But the, the main question is, okay, at the level of the pure logic, uh, you maybe offer an um, important contribution, maybe, but is there any other reason to consider the Buenos Aires plan important? Uh, in particular, if we consider application of logic, why is so important the Buenos Aires plan? Is there an interpretation of the meta-inference and the meta-inferential validity that made this proposal interesting? Well, the idea of the talk is to argue that 
uh, we could offer some aspects that are important. I'll show that why the hierarchy it could be important. Can we apply them the hierarchy anywhere? We will show some of them. So the idea is to offer more reason in order to support our plan. The first is they can be used to reevaluate dispute about rational revision of logics or uh, logical principles, in particular by adopting our Buenos Aires plan using some meta-inferential logic, we can help to understand the process of the rational adoption or rejection of logic or logical principles, even in logic without mod exponents. The second is they provide solution to semantic paradoxes that mutilate less classical logic than any other available option. And maybe another aspect is to provide more details way to identify logic, but this is not the main point of this talk. So this is the, the project. Uh, the first step is to give an introduction uh, the Buenos Aires plan, and the second step is introduce some technicalities about the ST hierarchy of meta-inferential logic. Next is to offer some applications, in particular uh, semantic paradoxes. Uh, what about the adoption problem, the problem introduced by uh, Saul Kripke, and way of contain and obey the, the distinction introduced by Dave uh, in the last talk in this seminar, and way of interpreting local meta-inferential validity in the hierarchy. The last step is going to be to offer some conclusions. So, um, let me introduce the SC hierarchy of differential logics. So, this is what I has already talked about. Uh, what is exactly a meta-inference? Uh, we will sometimes uh, talk about meta-inference, uh, referring to meta-inference of level one that relates inferences with inferences. We will be using a single conclusion uh, way to understand meta-inference, but nothing essential depends on it. And this is a generalization to every finite level. Uh, and for those of you who know, we will be using a, a non-cumulative level a hierarchy of uh, meta-inferences. Um, and, uh, uh, and we'll stop at the, at the omega level. We won't go further. So um, this hierarchy is defined in a local way. So meta inferential validity is understood locally. That means uh, preservation of satisfaction in every evaluation. So when uh, a meta inference is locally valid of any level, um, well, it's locally valid in a logic L1 and L2 because we will be considered mainly uh, mixed or mixed and impure in Chemla, uh, Gray, and spectral terminology. Um, well, a meta inference like that is valid if and only if for every evaluation we will be talking about propositional logics. Uh, if the evaluation satisfies every premise according to the logical one, then the evaluation satisfies the conclusion according to the logical two. Uh, and satisfaction is just uh, not being a counterexample. Um, so, uh, this is the purpose of the hierarchy. So, ST recovers every classical valid inference, but some meta inference are lost. In particular, CAT is lost. At least if one adopts um, a local notion of, uh, of meta inferential validity and there are no um, uh, one half constants available in the language. But is there a mixed logic that can recover every classical? Classically valid meta inference, and the answer is yes. Um, but that, uh, that th there is one logic that is a mixed meta inferential logic that recovers every classical validity, meta inferential validity, but uh, not every 
classical divided meta met inferential validity. But it is possible to define a logic that do that. But of course, just not to recover every meta, meta, meta validity. So you see where I'm going. You can define a hierarchy of metinferential logics that such that every classically valid meta inference is recovered at some point in the hierarchy. Uh, so that's what I have just said. Um, okay. So that is the, the general result. So how does these logics look like? So we have a hierarchy of meta-inferential logics such that um, every classical, classically valid meta-inference is recovered at some point in the hierarchy. Um, but no level recovers everything, okay? So in order to understand, to brief, briefly understand how this hierarchy is, is constructed, we will need some technical tool, uh, tools. Um, we use this notion of a star operator that basically for every consequence relation or every logic LJ, LK, the, the operational star applied to LJ, LK switches the standard for premises and conclusions. Thus, LJ, LK star is LK, LJ. So the first step in the hierarchy will be ST. The second one will be uh, TSST, STTS. So a meta inference is valid in this logic if and only if every evaluation that satisfies every premise according to TS satisfies the conclusion according to ST. Where TS, uh, if both of them are uh, defined semantically in a semantic way using three, um, a free value um, strong cleaning schema. So basically, uh, an inference uh, is satisfies uh, is satisfied in TS if and only if either some premise gets value zero or some conclusion gets value one. Um, and an inference is satisfied in ST if and only if either some premise gets value one or one half or some conclusions get value. Sorry, if if some premise gets value zero or one half or some conclusions get value one half or one. So, and in general, for every um, for every uh, level equal or higher than one, actually, the the consequence relation STN for meta inference of level n will work like this. So, for every relation B, if B satisfies every premise according to ST n minus one star, so the results of switching. Uh, putting the, the previous standard uh, upside down, then the evaluation satisfies the conclusion according to the previous standard in the hierarchy. So this is ST1, this is at ST2. So the standard for the conclusion is the standard for the, for the previous uh, step in the hierarchy. And the standard for the premises is the result of turning this upside down or replacing every T with an S and the other way around, as Chris Campbell says. And this is, the step four in the hierarchy and you see how this goes. And well, you get once again this result, every, for every, every classically valid meta inference of level N is recovered exactly by the N step in the hierarchy. With these tools, with this hierarchy, you can define the, uh, uh, an omega logic, so to say, uh, and I have done it in this, in this paper uh, and Chris Campbell has presented another version of this same logic in his paper. So basically a, a, a meta inference of any level n is valid in this logic if and only if it is valid at some point in the hierarchy. Um, okay. Uh, Chris described it in some other way. He says that uh, this is uh, the union of every standard of validity. So a meta inference of level n is valid here if it's only if it is valid in STN. So what are the virtues of this hierarchy? Well, um, first, uh, every, uh, every logic in the hierarchy can be expanded safely with a transparent true predicate. Um, Bruno, Darre, and I have proved in an, uh, um, a paper that we have submitted but it's unpublished that uh, there are sequent calculi for every one of these logics and every one of these truth theories. 
And moreover, the logic omega can be safely expanded with a transparent true predicate. But uh, for, all we, for all I know, there are no sequent calculi, traditional sequent calculi for it. But there are um, two different nested and labeled sequent calculi, one developed by Andrea Fielstad and another one developed by Pablo Cobreros, uh, Elio La Rosa here, and uh, Luca Trancini. Okay, so let's go now to the applications. So the main application, as, as, a, as we have already said, is the semantic paradoxes. So how should we uh, revise classical logic, or how should a logic be like to deal with semantic paradox from an anti-exceptionalist perspective? Sorry, Federico, before yeah. you move on, there's a question uh, by Sayantan who says, uh, what exactly the, uh, the sense in which logic is used here is. So what is a logic exactly for you? Uh, it's a, a language plus a standard of validity. Okay. Thank or if you want it, this, this is the intentional perspective. If you want it extensionally, it's, um, a set of sets of validities. So a set of inferential validity, a set of meta-inferential validity, and for every meta-inferential level, you have a set of validities. That's from mm -hmm. an extensional point of view. Thank you. Each, yes, each step in the hierarchy is a logic. A set of validities or meta-validities. Thank you. So, um, so being an uh, anti-exceptionalist view according to logic is continuous with science and that logical theories should be adopted or revised accordingly, okay? So there are a bunch of uh, many options here in the non-classical field. We will present just three or four options related to the preconsistent or the DLA-based field. Uh, okay, so... Um, one is one option is the the uh, paraconsistent logical P presented by Pris. So uh, this uh, logic may may be adopted because it can uh, can be the base of a theory of transparent truth. And the Pris stance is that we should uh, become paraconsistent since rejection of most ponens and exclusion seems necessary to deal with paradoxes. And this is a, this will be relevant maybe, this is a, a task and position. No uh, classically valid meta inferences uh, leave it aside, it's leave aside. More recently in a, a bunch of papers by Cobrero Segre, Ripley and, Man and Manroy, and a bunch of paper by Dave Ripley on his own. Um, they have claimed that, they have uh, claimed that ST works better than LP and uh, any other operational option. The reasons might be these ones because uh, they ST uh, gives a unified solution to every semantic paradoxes. It always involves giving up cut um, while keeping every classically valid inference. And it may also receive a compelling bilateralist, bilateralist reading. So of course, as it gives us cut, give up cut, it is a substructural position. But um, in a paper by Eduardo Barrio, Rosenblatt, and Tacher, they have shown that ST not only needs to give up cut, but also meta inferential versions of most points and explosion. And in fact, through some suitable translation function, one can argue that uh, ST is just a LP in disguise, that is, valid ST meta inference corresponded to valid LP inferences. And in, in a paper by Damian, Eduardo, and myself, we have claimed that um, if logic in the ST hierarchy seems to work better than ST, because each of them retain more classically valid meta inferences. So in Ule Hjortland's words, they mutilate less classical logic. And notice that if you adopt uh, a, a truth theory based on ST omega, then that, that theory mutilates no classical logic at all. At least if you look at meta-inferential validities, no? Uh, so though not, none of this logic is substructured in the traditional sense because 
uh, every logic in the in the hierarchy um, from ST1 uh, and, and, and higher, higher and onwards, upwards. Um, each logic in the hierarchy uh, give up some form of higher level cut. So they might be considered uh, higher levels of structure or something like that. Um, every logic but the logic omega that uh, validates everything. Uh, nevertheless, uh, Dave Ripley in his supergroup presentation claimed that one metadifferential step is enough and that ST should be the logic, uh, the better option. Um, mainly we think because uh, they, uh, the bilateral reading of inferential validity um, uh, uh, turns you against cut so you should be better by giving up cut and not uh, retaining cut. So, uh, but this of course is an additional premise that needs to be independently discussed. On the other side, if minimum mutilation, um, that is a position that says that you should leave as little classical logic behind as possible, is a right norm from two theories then, um, the logics in the hierarchy and the logic omega seem to work better than, than ST, but Dave has argued against minimum mutilation. So uh, we should either argue against bilateralism or try to defend minimum mutilation. We will take the last option. So uh, this will be a direct defense of our position defending minimum mutilation. And moreover, we will present some new applications of meta logics then will uh, provide indirect um, support for the logics in the hierarchy. So we think that from this anti-exceptionist perspe perspective, uh, true theories based on the logics in the hierarchy are a better option. So why should we uh, keep minimum mediation as a norm for true theories? Well, these are not new, uh, these are not, uh, new things we, that we will set. On one side, classical, lo classical logic, including CAT, is used in many valuable fields, including mathematical reasoning. So a supporter of a logic that invalidates some of these classical principles should either show how to replace them, so should replace the, the, the logics, the classical logic in these fields, or how to recover these classical principles that are lost. So ST is one of those logics, but none of the, but not the logics in the in the in the in the ST hierarchy. Unless you think that higher level metainferential principles are also part of uh, the principles used in, in when people do mat mathematics mathematical reasoning. In that case, uh, you should either go very up in the hierarchy or move to the logical mean. And the second one is that it might be desirable to have a suitable conditional uh, that validates every classical uh, conditional validity, classical inferential validity related to conditionals, but, but maybe uh, some more things, for example, this meta-inferential version of modus ponens. Uh, if you want to have that meta-inferential version of modus ponens, if you also want to have uh, meta modus ponens, if you think that it's valuable, that is part of the definition of a suitable conditional, then uh, ST is not enough. So, um, came up from this anti-exceptionist perspective, um, uh, semantic paradox, paradox are, are a good reason to revise classical logic and moreover than the logics in the hierarchy are better than ST, a better option than ST. Um, and minimum mutilation seems to be the main reason to favor these options um, against other ones. So um, this is the first application of differential theories uh, and of the uh, SC hierarchy. This is a new application, but not of uh, the logics in the hierarchy, but uh, of other uh, differential logics. 
Um, so we will talk a little bit about the adoption problem. In a, a Kripke manuscript, he argues that logics and logical principles cannot be adopted. This is a quote by uh, Romina Padro, a Romina Padro paper that explains uh, better than I can do it, the adoption problem. She says certain basic logical principles cannot be adopted because if a subject already infers in accordance with them, no adoption is needed. And if a subject, subject does not infer in accordance with them, no adoption is possible. And this is a quote by uh, Finn that is even more relevant to what we will say. She says that the reason why these two principles that are uh, core inferential uh, core inferential principles or core principles such as most points are universal instantiation cannot be adopted is the same reason why I take those rules to be basic and require at uh, the meta level for any adequate log alternative logical system to classical logic um, namely because they are govern all logical rules of inference including themselves so the 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 I the, the underline is ours. Um, and basically what she says is that um, um, every good candidate for a logic should, um, for what I understand, should validate most points in the theory because most points is required in the meta theory. Uh, so, and this is an important consequence of uh, what they say logic seems to be exceptional because some rules, most points, universal instantiation, are not revisable. But we will claim that met mixed meta-inferential logics might explain how the adoption of a new principle might be justified, even if the adopter lacks, of the, the logic of the adopter lacks most points. So, um, this is uh, a, um, Kunitz and Nikolai have a paper where basically defend the same position as, as Finn. Uh, they claim that uh, 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 adoption problems, uh, they deny the existence of the adoption problem for new principles. And the position is based partially on the idea that every logic should admit most points in the meta theory and thus they should admit it in the theory. This is a quote by them. We only feel that the burden of the proof is on the proponent of such a logical theory to explain how one can do without most points and at the same time uphold some fundamental uses of most points in one's meta theory. So we will show how one can do without most points in the theory. Uh, so uh, it is possible to think of, it may be possible to think of meta inference of level one as recovering the logics of the meta theory. And by that we mean that um, uh, a logic, uh, one can claim that a principle may be justified to use in the meta theory if it corresponds to a valid meta inference of level one. Okay? So what if, uh, what if one um, adopts this logic? It's a meta inferential logic of level one for meta inference, traditional meta inference of level one. And I, I call it TSLP for obvious reasons. A meta inference is valid in this logic if and only if for every relation B. If B satisfies every premise according to TS, then B, conf B confirms the conclusion or satisfies the conclusion according to LP. Okay? What is, what is the, what are the important features of this logic? Well, the following as they have LP as uh, a standard for conclusions, they have LP as a standard for inferential validity. Therefore, modus ponens is invalid in it. Nevertheless, this thing that we call meta modus ponens uh, will be valid in the, in the theory, okay? Because uh, the only valuations that will satisfy the antecedent according to TS are the ones to give value one to B. Thus, B will also satisfy uh, according to B. So it's a logic that has meta modus ponens but lacks modus ponens, okay? 
So a natural way to interpret this feature of this logic is as saying in the theory that it accepts model metamodal exponents or and rejects while rejecting or at least not accepting modal exponents. And this is a fact that corresponds to how the theory behaves both both in the object and the meta level. Okay. Um, so not only do we have a theory that can legitimately use in a meta theory a form of modal exponents because it validates this meta inference that is a form of meta inferential form of modal exponents, but also just not accepts or rejects modal exponents in the theory, but also says in the theory because meta modal exponents turns out to be valid and modal exponents not. And moreover, we think that the adoption of TSLP might be an interest option for a supporter of LP as TSLP brings some justification for the use of modal exponents in the meta theory, even when rejecting it as a valid inference in the inferential level. So those are the new uh, applications. Now we will assess some, I think that the main, the main criticism that has been raised against the hierarchy that is uh, the following. Um, so Chris Cambler, Dave Ripley and Brian Porter, for all we know they are the only ones, has pointed out that um, ST-like mixed meta inferential logics have a major flow that they do not flow, they do not obey the principles they contain. So what is exactly obeying? Uh, accepting a rule is, is making it valid. But what is obeying? So this is a, one possibility. One can say that a logic L obeys uh, an inference, for example, if and only if it validates it. Uh, if it validates it, sorry, then the logic also validates this possible translation on the inference in the, high, in the immediately higher level. Uh, so even though uh, this is a critical system, every logic in the hierarchy is uh, exposed to, neither this new logic that we have introduced nor the Omega logics are open to this criticism. Uh, um, moreover, what happens to TSLP is not that it does not obey a logic uh, a principle it validates, but that it may obey things that uh, just not accept or yeah, just not accept, at least if you understand obedience like this. But people just not say these things. For example, um, Ripley says the following, this, this is how he elucidates the notion of obedience. In his talk, uh, he, says, he has said the following, in his supergroup talk, he has said the following. A meta-inference is uh, like this, is obey, obey, if and only if, either the conclusion is valid or some premise is not valid. Then for any meta inference n, the truth theory based on the logic ST omega contains meta inference of level n that does not obey, many of them, infinite many of them. In particular, um, oh, okay. So um, obedience seems to be understood in a global, in a global way. A global validity is Preservation of validity. Okay. So, uh, so uh, let's focus on this form of this instance of cat without context and with the liar as the only um, the, uh, as, as the cat formula. Okay. So, is cat this instance of cat globally valid in in this logic? Well. There are two options. The first one is to say, yes, it is, because at least in how Chris Cambler understood this, this logic, uh, the relevant standard, this is a meta inference of, these things are inferences. So in order to see if these things are valid here, you should focus on the standard for inferences, and that is ST. And as these two things are valid, then uh, in ST, they are valid in ST, T omega, uh, therefore, this is not globally valid. But then, uh, this truth theory faces the same problem that uh, the truth theory based on ST. Okay. 
But the, the other way to, to evaluate, assess this criticism is the same. Well, maybe it's not globally valid. It's, it's another sense of globally valid, I think. Because uh, here, these two things are, are working as premises so of a meta inference of level one. So in order to see whether or not they are valid, you should check the standard for premises of a meta inference. And that is a TS. And none of them are valid in TS. Okay? But I realize that the standard use of global validity is this one, okay? So um, what is, uh, what does Chris Scambler understand for being obey, um, for a logic obeying its principles? Well, mainly he says that a logic obey its principles if and only if uh, every inference of level alpha are closed under alpha plus one validities. Okay. And of course, none of the logics in the hierarchy nor the logic omega satisfy this demand. But we think that um, this leaves no room for, if one imposes this demand, then there is no room for mix uh, and impure logics um, with some notable exceptions, that, such as this, this guy here. Um, which is a, a very strange creature. Uh, I, I have named it nothing everything. So this is a mixed logic that satisfies Scambler demand. But why does it satisfy? Well, uh, so a, a, an inference is valid here if and only if either some premise gets a value that belongs to the empty set or some conclusions get any value in the set of true value in the, in the evaluation. Of course, um, it was this logic satisfied this demand because it's a completely trivial logic. Every inference and every beta inference of every level is valid in this logic. Okay. So, uh, so th this mix and impure logic seems to have uh, multiple applications. So, for, on the one hand, um, this demand seems to be a kind of bias toward pure logics. Um, but on the other hand, it results imposing it results in losing more than one gains. And when comparing logics by what they achieve, it's not hard to realize that a logic like TS fares better than most of its inferential rivals as a, as a theory on transparent truth, at, at least if minimum mutilation is a norm. But why should a logic a truth theory based on this logic be preferable to a logic, a truth theory based on ST, just because this guy is close under, is obeys its, its own its own rules, and this uh, this truth theory just not. Uh, it seems that uh, it's not that this is even as as, uns as unsatisfactory as a truth theory based on ST. So there is something that um, the, the supporters of this criteria needs to, to, to say why we should prefer a true theory based on ST to a true theory based on this guy, even if this guy um, satisfies Scambler's demand and this guy does not. Um, so it seems that um, being close under the next level validities is at most a contextual virtue. When considering semantic paradox, it might be a, a major flaw. So, uh, so before before ending this section, uh, uh, just notice that uh, if Ripley is right, then Scambler demand seems to uh, seems to be saying that we should not only pay attention to the local validities but also to the global metaphysical validities when characterizing a logic. Um, so for what we have said, we think that mixed metaferential logics seems a better fit that with, to deal with semantic paradox and its alternatives. So finally, uh, I don't know if we have time for this. Uh, even, even though we will remain neutral about bilateralism, uh, we will now provide a, a, a way of interpretation a bilateralist interpretation of local metaphysical validity. 
And this interpretation might model the way logicians reason in the meta theory about the logical principles. So, what is it for a, a meta inference of level n, of any level n, to be valid? What does it mean? Exactly? Well, it might be this thing that it is incorrect, incorrect that is out of bounds, to accept every premise and also reject the conclusion. This might be fine if by accepting every premise of a meta inference, this means that the evaluate, if this notion of acceptance of a premise of a meta inference can be modeled by evaluations that uh, satisfies uh, the, the premise. That is, either they uh, are a counterexample to some of the, the premise of the premise, or they are uh, not a counterexample to some of the conclusion of the premise of the meta inference. Nevertheless, if accepting a meta inference or an inference is equivalent to, accept, to take it as valid, then this does not seem as a reasonable candidate to, to interpret global, uh, local validity, but global validity, preservation of validity. So this, too, this, this is another elucidation of the notion that might be more satisfactory if one thinks this thing about uh, the notion of, of acceptance of a meta-inference in this context. So um, a meta-inference of level n is valid in this new reading if and only if it is incorrect not to accept or reject every premise and reject the conclusion, well, uh, while this thing is modeled, uh, it's modeled by evaluation being a counterexample to A, and this thing is modeled by evaluation not being a counterexample to, to the premise. Uh, and this is another way to say the same thing, that we, you know, we introduce this notion of weekly acceptance to model, to cash out this, this notion of not accept, not reject. So if to weakly upset an inference is just the meta-inferential equivalent to our, to our attitude towards a sentence when we realize that a particular evaluation is not a counterexample to it. It's sort of equivalent to considering, considering, considering it, uh, thinking about it and not discarding it by the, the, the data that the evaluation provides. So as a conclusion, we have argued for the endorsement of the Buenos Aires plan uh, as a way to deal with semantic paradox. So um, every differential level matter and um, uh, it's better to develop the differential logics. Uh, and we have offered offer a way to understand how it is possible to have different attitudes toward different differential forms of model exponents. Regarding specifically the adoption problem, we have shown that uh, it seems to not pose a, a definite challenge to logics that invalidates metal mode exponents as, as an inference, at least if those logics uh, adopts meta mode exponents. We have assessed different uh, understanding of the distinction between containing and obeying, uh, and how a supporter uh, of this mixed meta differential logic might uh, answer the challenge, different challenges that uh, Ripley and Scambler and also Brian Porter pose. And finally, uh, we have uh, very quickly introduced a Vitatelis reading of meta local meta-inferential validity in terms of weak acceptance and rejection. So, thanks. <laughs>